Hello world, it's John from Sparkbox back to talk about everyone's favorite topic, automated testing. This video is part of a series on how to help improve the accessibility of your site with automated accessibility tests. In the previous videos, we talked about using a browser extension called Axe to test the accessibility of your site. In this video, I'll give a quick intro to one of my favorite automated testing tools, Cypress. So Cypress is not an accessibility testing tool. It's an end-to-end -end testing application that allows you to automate the testing of your entire site. And it is pretty cool. To get started with Cypress, you can install it with NPM and then you can run NPX Cypress Open. That's going to open the Cypress dashboard showing all of the tests in your project. Now the first time you run Cypress in a project, it's going to recognize that and set you up with a folder called Cypress, complete with a bunch of examples that show all of its capabilities. If you never used it before, I highly recommend looking through these tests to see all of the cool things that Cypress can do. But for our example today, I just have a few basic tests, which you can see on the left. And then over here on the right, you can see that we'll be running the test in Chrome. And there's a button to run all of the tests. But before we run any of the tests, let's take a look at one of the pages that we want to test. So this is a basic signup form. It has a username field and a password field and a submit button. And when I click the submit button, I can see some validation errors. So I didn't enter a username and I need to enter a password that's at least 10 characters. And if I go ahead and fill out the fields correctly and click the submit button again, then the validation error is clear. And so before we look at the code to test these forms, I'm gonna go ahead and just run the test so we can take a look at what Cypress actually does. When we run the test, we see that Cypress has loaded the signup page on the right, and over on the left, we see all of the details about the test run. So we've got two tests, one that asserts that validation errors display when the form is invalid, and another test that asserts that no errors display when the form is valid. So here's the really cool part about Cypress. When we expand the test details, we can see every single step that occurred during the test. So we start by visiting the signup page, then we get the form on that page, and we can see over on the right that when we hover over that step, the form element is highlighted on the page. This happens for every element that we get on the page. Moving on, we get the submit button from the form, and then we click it. Now when we click the button, the DOM changes, and when we hover over the click action, we can see that the page toggles between the state of the page before and after the click. So if you've ever done headless end-to-end -end testing, you know that one of the biggest pains when a test fails is figuring out the state of the page leading up to the test failure. But Cypress makes it an absolute breeze to figure out where things went wrong. Moving on, we want to make some assertions about the state of the page after submitting an invalid form. So we get the main error message and assert that it has the correct text. Next, we find the username input and assert that an error class has been added to the element to highlight it, and also assert that the error message for the input displays the correct text. Finally, we do the same for the password input. So in our next test, instead of trying to submit an empty form, we find the inputs, type some valid text into them, and then click the submit button. This time, since the form is valid, we assert that we find no elements with an error class and also that no error messages exist. Okay, now that we've seen what the test run looks like, let's look at some of the tests themselves. Cypress was built on top of Mocha, so if you've seen Mocha tests before, this will look familiar. First, we describe our test suite, and then we declare our test with it. Then Cypress gives us this Psi object that has an API for interacting with the page. It has a visit method that accepts a URL and a get method to grab DOM elements. And the methods are chainable, so we can perform actions like click on our element. Each of these method calls corresponds to an action we saw in the test runner output, so it's pretty intuitive to read and write tests. We can also assert things about elements with the should method, for example, asserting here that it has specific text. We can use the same chaining syntax to assert other things, for example, that the input has an error class. In the next test, we visit the page again, and this time we invoke a method called type on an input in order to enter text. 
Then after we click the submit button, we assert that no elements with the class error or error message exist. So if we use an assertion like should, and that assertion is true, then our tests pass. If the assertion that we make turns out not to be true, then we see a test failure. Here's an example of what a failure looks like if it finds the incorrect text for an element. Okay, so we've looked at Axe, we've looked at Cypress, but how do we bring both of those together? Well, I hope you like cliffhangers because in the next video, we're going to talk about just that. Stay tuned as we talk about how to combine the power of Axe and Cypress to automate our accessibility tests. Thanks for watching. See you next time.